and the interlude has to do with the fact that so much of the information on the web describes the gastric bypass as being much more invasive or much more intense in comparison to the sleeve. And I would say, yes, it's true that the gastric bypass does have some additional technical complexity. There are some finicky parts that can be a little bit more technically challenging, but I'm going to stick with the idea that both of them have almost exactly the same physiologic impact on the patient and almost the same risk factors and very similar outcomes with some key differences that we'll come back to. So anyway, if I say they're almost the same and the web says the gastric bypass is more scary, where is that mismatch coming from? And um, I think at least part of the story is coming from a banned marketing program. And it's going to take a little bit of history. So the lap band came to the U.S. and was approved by the FDA in 2001. At that time, the only bariatric operation or the only competition was the gastric bypass because the sleeve didn't come along until 2005. And so, of course, the band had a manufacturer with it, and the manufacturer had a goal, appropriately, to sell as many bands as they could sell. And so they had a marketing program, which was relatively new to the bariatric surgery arena, this marketing program. And so the marketing program not only presented educational material showing how good the band was, or how nice it was, or how easy it was, they also... Um, very appropriately or reasonably uh, marketed against the gastric bypass. And what they did was they selected certain studies that were real about the gastric bypass from the 80s and 90s showing very difficult outcomes. And this was in the time when the gastric bypass was being done with the big open incision, uh, when surgeons were still learning how to do the operation well and still learning how to prepare patients. And so in the 80s and 90s, there were many more complications and risks. And, and the band marketers presented those older papers as if that was the current gastric bypass information. And so they made the gastric bypass look a little worse than it really was even at that time. And so the band, by the way, has gone away because the band turns out not to be a good lasting operation. Uh, but the information that um, was put out there that made the gastric bypass seem more intense or more scary uh, than it is now um, has interestingly kind of hung around. Um, I'm going to present some comparisons to you based on actual data between these operations and we'll see that they're actually uh, fairly balanced. So the information that you get off the internet, um, you know, I'm not against the internet, I think a lot of it is good, but just take it with a grain of salt. Here's the interesting thing. These complication rates are the same between the gastric bypass and the sleeve. And um, there's this instinctive idea when you look at the diagrams, the gastric bypass has more complexity, and it does. Um, and so it's surprising actually that these would be the same, these outcomes or these risk factors. Um, and so I want to expand a little bit on the sleeve. I think that a lot of what happens with sleeve perception is this diagram. And in this diagram, um, and no discredit to the artist, but the artist has left out a lot of the blood vessels that are along this edge and has left out the nearby organs, which includes the spleen and the colon and the pancreas. The colon's in there, but not close like it really is in real life. And, and has also left out the encroaching or the intrusive fat tissue that's often there. Um, even if you do your liver shrinkage diet, still the fat can get in the way and make it difficult for us to see things. And so the point is that the sleeve isn't really a small operation. And I don't want to scare you about the sleeve. We do it very regularly. We do it very low complication rates. But it really is physiologically in the same ballpark as the gastric bypass. So the big three.